Arena doesn't need a meta, they say. Keep it casual, keep it fun. Keep the stress out of it, keep it in conquest mode. Hello, I am the Thousand Pound Pig, and I'm going to present to you what I think is the current meta in the arena mode in Smite. A lot of people don't really think arena mode needs a meta, though I would say it does already have one. To me, a meta is what people expect from other players in the game. It is not always the best advice or recommendation which people always give you, but this is a MOBA type of game even though it's third person view, where efficiency is very important. To surviving from getting killed, getting ganked, and actually doing well in the game, which is getting kills and getting a lot of farm, getting a lot of experience, and winning the game for your team. Yes, this is a team game, you have to play with four other players in arena mode, it is 5 versus 5. Your objective is to get your minions into the other team's portal, which is on the other side of the arena. And their objective is to do the same, but to your portal. So treat this as a kind of a guide tips to arena mode. In arena mode, you do have a score on the right side of the screen. Red and blue. Whatever team you're on, you want to keep that score as high as possible. And you want to keep the other score as low as possible. Once a team reaches zero, then they lose. If you kill a minion from the other team, that means they lose one point. If you kill a god on the enemy team, that means they lose five points. If a minion goes through your portal, that means you lose one point. And once you are 10 points or below, last hits no longer count, unless you are trying to hit the large minions, the fat ones. I'm just saying that because these are the rules of arena. A lot of people forget the minions and don't really know how this scoring system works. Once you do jump into arena, you have the choice of selecting a god. The usual composition I see in arena mode is two mages. That is because mages do great burst damage and they have large abilities which are easy to hit. The other three classes can be filled with the other roles. I would suggest a hunter because hunters are great in the end game. They start really weak and they get really tough later on. An assassin. An assassin is good for getting behind the enemy lines and taking out their squishy targets because an assassin is great for single target damage. They also have some area of effect abilities but they are very memorable and thrive in fighting enemy gods instead of just farming. And finally for the final position I would say either guardian or a warrior. This role is the tank of the team, the kind of the guy which attracts a lot of attention from the other team and can sustain a lot of damage. So they don't die, they can escape a lot of ultimates. But this role can also be aggressive. The guardian or the warrior can use it to initiate. They could purchase blink or they can just ride in there and just stun them and that can be a great initiation tool for your team. This is arena mode where crowd control, stuns, knockups, they all help a lot. Once you are into the game, don't buy any starting items because it's not needed. You earn a lot of experience and gold in arena mode very fast because you are so close to the fighting almost all the time and it's very easy to go back to base. This isn't assault mode where you're not allowed back to base. Though I may do a video on that in future. What do you think? For arena mode, usually the safest option is to buy boots first. This is to give you some extra cooldown, penetration, damage in general, attack speed. But in arena mode, it also helps for your movement speed. Because a lot of arena mode is about positioning and running from fights or getting into fights and getting into the right positions to get that important kill or to avoid the other team getting it. And from then on just choose your standard build for the god. I want to keep this video fairly short so I'm not going to go into detail about that. Just standard builds but try aim for cooldown and burst damage instead of sustainability. As for the actives they are very important for arena mode because as I said before, knock up stuns. They are great in arena mode because they help group someone in place for your team to do the rest of the damage. So purification beads, Aegis amulet are great. Purification beads is very important against certain gods such as Ares who has an ultimate which pulls you towards him. And Aegis is a great ability which can stop you taking a lot of burst damage. So if you're playing against a god such as Agni or Poseidon, you can Aegis their ultimate and save yourself from taking a lot of damage. And I would also suggest blink or combat blink. Depends on your god, does he have a natural escape? Does he need to blink and initiate a lot? Then get greater blink because of the cooldown for it. But if you have no escape and purification bees just isn't enough, then go get combat blink and you can use that to escape. Finally, once you have all your items and you've got your abilities, head to the left side. Your left side is where all the jungle camps are. You could start off on the right hand side, but that's where the other team is. Basically, treat the other team as atheists. This is a game where you play as a god. The other team are atheists, they don't want anything to do with you, you don't want anything to do with them, you're both on your separate jungles at the very start and then you'll meet in the middle later on. You could invade but it's such an open map that they'll see you coming from a mile away. There are three camps there and now with this new arena map they are new camps, look at it, it's cool, they hide behind the little gates. Finally once the timer reaches zero, the gates go down, the minions jump out and you gotta kill them. First is a blue buff, you and your team get this and give it to the mage. The mage then goes to the middle of the map and starts clearing waves. This is to help with their cooldown and give them a lot of mana so they are the main farmer in the early game. 
Next is a red buff. Now this is usually given to the mage or the assassin. And this is primarily the person who wants to take out enemy gods. They want to do that burst damage. And finally the four leftover gods should still move over and get the purple buff. Give this buff to either your hunter or your assassin. It's up to you really. The hunter seems to benefit from this the most because it's a lot of attack speed. And it can help give them experience and gold a lot faster than the other team's hunter if they don't have that same purple buff. And from then on it can just be straight up team fights. No one really pays attention to the jungle anymore after that. You can go to it every now and then and just pick it up, but most people just go in for the team fights and chase kills. But this is arena mode, so it's team fight central. Remember knockups, stuns, roots, slows, they are all your friend. For the more advanced players, you can chain your CC. CC of course means crowd control. So if someone else stuns someone, you have a white bar which appears on top of an enemy god. Once that bar runs out, then they are able to move again. So once it is nearly run out, then you can stun them again by using a different ability of your own or someone else on your team can stun them. For example, let's use Anher. He can jump in which knocks the enemy gods up into the air. While they are in the air, of course, they are out of their control. They can't control themselves unless they, of course, use purification beads. But for this example, let's just say they don't have that or they don't use it. So Anher leaps into the air, he falls down to the ground and he knocks them up into the air with them. Once in the air they are out of control, then he can impale them. So that's two different forms of crowd control and during both of them the enemy team is out of control. Not only are they taking damage but they are trapped. Or Geb, if you give him blink or just if you're close to the enemy gods, you can use your shockwave ability which knocks them up into the air and then you can use your ultimate which is called cataclysm which stuns everyone around you. Most people as Geb, they tend to blink in, use cataclysm and then they knock up into the air. So once again, if you can change this crowd control, it's a big deal for your team. It lets your team do a lot of damage. And that is usually how you can win if you can control your crowd control. Otherwise, if you are the person getting stunned or chain stunned like this, I was just get purification beads. This is what I said before about this item, but once you get this item, it makes you immune to all forms of crowd control for a short duration. Not all gods need this though. Some gods already have abilities which can prevent them from being crowd controlled, such as Artemis's ultimate called Caledonian Ball which makes her crowd control immune for a short duration. But it moves like this all over the place, just be sure to read your god's abilities if you want to master them. But crowd control is very important for the arena mode. Don't jump in and expect everyone else to use their crowd control because if you see someone out of position you have to go for it, you have to stun them and do the damage. Don't wait for your teammates because that usually doesn't happen in casual arena mode or once you are in a solo queue. That requires a lot of communication and you need to be over some kind of voice communication software to do that. It is all about position. If you catch someone off guard you grab them, pick them up for your team, that could be a quick stun and then your team will jump on them and get the kill. Otherwise someone else will stun them and you can get the kill. This is a team game though. It's kind of hard to explain how someone can get out of position. It's more about experiencing, knowing about your own god's capabilities and the god which is out of position. Like do they have an escape? Are they really out of position? Maybe they can quickly get back. Maybe it's just a bait. So don't be too gung-ho about it. But also be aware of your own teammates abilities. Especially if one of them is a guardian or a warrior or someone who has a great ability to initiate with. Such as if an Ares pulls someone towards him, you can do some great damage by plopping a Kraken right on him. Or if you have a Thanatos on the team, leave the kill for him. Same with Kali, let her get the finishing blow on a god which is her target and she will regain all of her health. And there are other gods which can benefit from killing certain gods such as Jibalanke which makes his passive more powerful. And it's just all over the place, but don't forget about the minions. Later on in the game, Siege Towers will come out of the spawn. These Siege Towers are worth 15 points. That is 3 god kills. So don't just stand to the side and let the siege tower pass you. You have to stand in its way. You have to block it, like physically block it. Otherwise it will just ignore you and go straight through the portal. This is how you will lose games. By ignoring the minions. But you will find that a lot of arena mode is a lot of chasing people and a lot of running from fights. You need to know your own strengths and weaknesses. But as far as your team is concerned, your team's strength is around their own spawn. But obviously you die, you spawn and you don't have far to go. Same with the other team, so never get caught too far up the field. I like buying health pots and mana pots, so when I am really far up, then I'll just pop one of those so I can sustain myself a little bit, but otherwise it's just not really worth it. You might as well go back to base, buy some items and get back to the fight, which is usually in the middle of the arena. But yeah, the god to god fights, I can't really explain much in this video because it's really about experience. You need to know what they do and your own strengths and weaknesses, of course. So I hope this video helps you. I hope you understand the current meta of arena mode. Uh, all the expectations of what people expect from you and what you 
can expect from other people to like what the average player plays like and you can base your play style around that remember this is a team game you are playing with four other people against five other people multiplayer of course so don't be a jerk don't expect everyone to know this stuff share it around to people who you want to know it and have fun